All right, so today we are going to complete Unit 4, Lesson 5, which is an extension of what we did in Lesson 4. Um, we're going to take everything that we learned about finding slope from tables, graphs, and ordered pairs and apply them to application problems. All right, so let's just jump right in with number one. The table below shows the high temperatures and degrees Fahrenheit of a city during the first part of June. And so I look at the table and I see that I've got dates here. Okay. These are going to be my X values or my input values. I do want to remind you that when we do <clears throat> the slope formula that we want to put the X values on the bottom and the Y values on the top. All right, and so I just wrote the delta Y divided by delta X down here in my bottom left-hand corner. All right, so part A, find the rate of change in high temperature between June 1st and June 6th. So they want me to find from June 1st to June 6th. So my X's are gonna go on bottom, one and six, my Y's are going to go on top, 72 and 76. And then to find the change in the values, I subtract them. When I simplify, I get negative 4 divided by negative 5. And of course, a negative divided by a negative becomes positive. Now, I am going to write what this means using um, a sentence just because this is a word problem so remember that we want to have a word answer okay now if i'm talking about temperature and i say that the temperature raised approximately four fifths of a degree each day most people would have a more difficult time understanding that than if i put 0.8 degrees each day okay but so just sometimes you might want to change it to a decimal. Other times you might want to leave it as a fraction. Um, as long as you understand what it means in either format, then you should be okay. All right, and so in my sentence, I put the temperature increased by 0.8 degrees, okay? How did I know that it increased? Well, I know that it's increasing because this 0.8 is a positive number okay so that means that it increased part b find the rate of change in high temperature between june 6th and june 8th so i'd like for you to pause this video and try to do on your own june 6th to june 8th the same way that we did part a All right, so I have gone ahead and completed part B. You should have gotten a positive four for your slope, which means that the temperature increased by four degrees approximately each week, okay? All right, now part C. During which of these time intervals did the temperature rise faster? And this one should be pretty simple. Which one is bigger, 4 or 0.8? And so June 6th to the 8th, it was a rate of change of 4, which is faster. Okay? All right. Let's go look at a second example from a table. Josh started a diet and decided to record his weight every other week we are going to find the rate of change between four different sets of weeks, all right? So I'm going to do part A with you, and then I'm going to have you pause the video and try parts B, C, and D. All right, so the first one they want me to focus on, weeks zero to two. So let's find the change in my y values 224 and 219 
and then let's find my two x values, the weeks, 0 and 2, and then I'm going to subtract those. 224 minus 19 is 5, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And this equals negative 2 and a half. And then we're going to write down what this means in words. Okay, so negative two and a half, what that really means, because it's negative, I know that Josh lost weight. And then the two and a half tells you how much, okay? So he's losing weight at a rate of 2.5 pounds per week. So I'd like for you to pause the video, try examples, parts, um, example two, parts B, C, and D. So I haven't done any solving yet, but I did um, pull the information out of the table and I just set up each of my ratios. My next step will be to simplify each of them. Now that I have simplified all of my ratios, I need to go ahead and um, describe what these answers mean in words. All right, and now I have given all of my um, parts an explanation as to what the answer meant, okay? In part D, what did it mean for us to get zero? And that just meant that Josh did not gain weight or lose weight during this two week period of time. All right, so those are our two examples that we're going to look at that are um, finding slope in an application problem from a table, okay? Now we're gonna go um, kind of switch gears and we're gonna go look at a graphing example, okay? So the graph below shows the number of miles driven after each hour of a road trip. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mark on this graph the X and Y, um, cor or, well not coordinates, but axis. Remember, delta Y goes on top, delta X is gonna go on the bottom in our slope. So this is X axis down here. All right, so we're gonna find the rate of change from hour one to hour four four, hour one to hour four. So hours are my x variables. So I know that I'm gonna go from one to four. Let's go find this on the graph from one to four, okay? Whoops, I went from zero to four. Let's try that again, one to four. And so I need to find the y values um, at one hour in and at four hours in. So at one hour in, I have driven 60 miles. And at four hours in, I have driven 160 miles. And so just to make sure that you're doing that right, if you wanna draw a line over to the y value over there on the y axis, that's where I'm getting those numbers from. All right, now we're gonna set this up as our ratio, be sure that we're subtracting, and then let's reduce. Which is just gonna be 100 over three. Okay, and then I'm gonna teach you a new symbol. So this little squiggle at the top of these notes, that little squiggle is what we use to represent when an answer is approximate, all right? So down here in part A, 
this is approximately equal to 33.3 miles per hour. It's not equal to, it's approximately equal to. All right, let's try part B. So for this example, we're going to be going from hour 8 to hour 10. So here's 8 and here's 10. And I am going to draw these lines until I get to those two points. Okay. And then, of course, those were my x values. So bring the 8 and the 10 down here. And now let's go figure out what those y values are. So right here and right here, and if I look over, at 10 hours in, this car had driven 460 miles. At 8 hours in, this car, well, there's no number there, okay? So let's take a look at the bottom of this graph and see how they're counting up, okay? Each line um, or little block here is looking like it's 60. Let's double check that though, okay? So 60, and then from 60 up two more. So from 60 to 160 is 100, which means if you divide that in half, since there's two blocks there, each one represents 50, 50 miles, okay? So what I'm going to need to do is take 360, add 50 to it. 360 plus 50 is going to give me 410. And that's what I'm going to write here, 410. Okay, so... I did have to do just slightly a little bit of work to figure out what that Y value was. Now I'm going to turn this into my ratio. Be sure to subtract. Okay. Um, 410 minus 460 is negative 50. 8 minus 10 is negative 2. And then this is going to simplify to equal. 25, and that's positive, miles per hour. All right. Now, the one benefit to application problems is the level of um, logic that you can apply when you get an, a final answer. If I had somehow gotten for this answer in Part B a negative 25, because I missed a sign somewhere. Um, and then I tried to think to myself, how could a person drive negative 25 miles in an hour? It just wouldn't make any sense. So if you think about your final answer in context to the problem that you're solving, if it doesn't make sense, there's probably a reason for it. And I would recommend going back and double checking your work, okay? All right, um, let's go try our second example using a graph. And it's going to be the exact same process. Okay, so I'm gonna do from 2000 to 2004, from 2000 to 2004, right here. I'm going to go up and find where those points are. All right. Um, write that down right here. All right. <clears throat> now, down below, I just took out a chunk right here um, of the Y axis, and I rewrote it down below so I could write on it, and then we could see what's happening a little better. So... Um, 42, and then there's this blank space in the middle, and then 50. So I need to find out 50 
minus 42 is 8, okay, and then 8, if I broke this up evenly, that'd be 4 and 4, right? So, and that would just be dividing it by 2. So 42, add 4 more is going to give me 46, and that's how I'm going to go through and fill in all of the um, in-between spaces in my y-axis on my graph. All right, so my y-axis is filled in. Now I can resume figuring out the y values that go with these ordered pairs right here. So in the year 2000, the water depth was 62. And in the year 2004, the water depth was 78. Okay, let's simplify this. So I simplified it all the way down to four. And what that means, um, and I don't think that we actually talked about what this graph means. Um, let's see, the graph below shows the rate of change in the water depth of a lake through various years. Okay, so from the year 2000 to 2004, the lake had increased an average of four feet of water per year. So that's what that means. All right, I'd like for you to pause the video and try part B. All right, so I have completed part B, and I got an answer that is negative four feet per year. So what that would mean is that the water um, depth was going down at a rate of four feet per year. It was losing water, or it might have been um, an extended drought or something like that, okay? All right, so these were our two examples that we're gonna look at that um, had graphs. Now we're going to do our final part, which is some word problems, okay? But these are um, all going to be ordered pairs that I'm going to read the word problem and identify the ordered pairs. All right, so let's just jump right in with example five here. Ava started a savings account with $500 in it. Let's talk about what that means. So I slid my notes page over just a little bit so that we would have this margin to write a note in. All right, so when you open a savings account for the first time, today is day zero or month zero for that matter. It's something brand new that you're doing, so no time has yet passed, okay? So I'm gonna put zero for that. And then the balance was $500. Alrighty. Now, after six months, her savings account balance was $731. So, um, six months has now passed, and she has $731. We are going to find the rate of change from these two ordered pairs. Now, it is helpful if you color code. Um, notice that I have two separate sentences, and the first piece of information that they gave me was time, and that's my X value. The second piece of information they gave me was a dollar amount, and that's my Y value. All right, so I now need to find the slope or the rate of change, okay? At what rate was her account earning money um, per month? So what I'm gonna do is just what we did yesterday, 500 minus 731 
All right, now I am going to subtract the x values. Zero and six and subtract. And then write those as a ratio. All right, 500 minus 731 is negative 231. Zero minus six is a negative six. And then if I use a calculator to simplify that real quick, it would be 200, uh, sorry, I was just rewriting the same number apparently. Okay, 38.50. And that would be over one. So notice that the dollar amount is still on top and the one on bottom represents one month, okay? So, her savings account was gaining at a rate of $38.50 per month. That's what that means. I'd like for you to pause the video and try example six. All right, so our very first sentence says an airplane is flying at an altitude of 36,000 feet when it begins its descent for landing. So the next sentence says 12 minutes into its descent. So what that means to me is that when the plane first begins its descent, zero time into that descent has happened. So my ordered pair for this is going to be zero and 36,000. My second sentence now, 12 minutes into its descent, so that's my time. The plane is at 29,400 feet. All righty. And so now I'm going to find the rate of change. My Y values and my X values. Go ahead and set that up. All right, and so my final answer for number six was negative 550 feet per minute. And because it's negative, um, it does make sense that it's negative because the plane is descending, meaning it's coming down out of the air. So the direction it's coming is down. So it should be um, a negative number. All right, let's look at number seven, which is a little more direct. Um, whenever your initial value, the time is zero, sometimes it can be difficult to identify that. Um, but with an example like number seven, it's not difficult at all. The very first sentence is very direct. Ten minutes into her workout, Laura had burned 98 calories. So that means 10 and 98. That's my ordered pair. Okay. Then five, oh, whoops, 20 Five minutes in, she had burned 272. Find the rate of change in calories that she burned between 10 minutes and 25 minutes. So why don't you pause the video and set up your ratio. All right, so hopefully you were able to set that ratio, ratio up correctly, and then you just needed to simplify it. Um, a calculator made this one a lot easier to do, um, so don't worry about that um, if you struggled with that division, okay? All right, now number eight. I want you to pause this video and I want you to try number eight entirely on your own. All right, and then I just want... Um, 
to remind you that our x variable should be our time, okay? The population should be the outcome. All right, hopefully you were able to at least get here. I am going to use a calculator to help make this easier for us. Um, if I divided those, I'm going to get negative 396 people per year. And so what this means is that the population of this place was going down, okay? Which is why it is negative. Alrighty. That is our lesson on slope applications. So what you're going to do now is complete the um, quizzes assignment that's posted onto Google Classroom.